Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to the vlog. My name is Steph. So I'm going to quickly talk about CSS and page layout. Very quick video, very quick vlog for beginners to web design. And somebody pointed out in the YouTube comments recently that they had a harder time learning CSS than JavaScript. I believe it was JavaScript. And it could have been Python. Now, just in case you don't know, JavaScript, Python, these are full-fledged programming languages, whereas CSS is a styling language for web pages, and web apps, websites. So a lot of people find CSS, especially when it comes to page layout, much more difficult than programming languages, which is kind of funny because programming languages are very powerful and there's a lot of complexity there. The reason why a lot of people have problems with CSS is because CSS technology in of itself, the language itself, in my opinion, is not the best conceived language. CSS was originally designed to style web pages, and web pages were originally conceived of as text documents, as, way of, as a way to exchange information in text format. Over the years, though, it evolved into a full-fledged programming environment where web pages became web apps. Web apps are just web pages that are applications. And web apps require graphical user interfaces. They require interfaces, not pages of text. And so the paradigms built into CSS are not well suited for graphical user interfaces. With HTML5 and CSS3, they've done a lot to fix that. For instance, you have now CSS tables, which basically allow you to create grids or tables, rows and columns in your web pages pretty easily. If you don't know programming, it's very common in programming languages. That's how they sort of divide up the window, if you will, into columns and rows and so forth to make it easy for people, for programmers to create the basic graphical user interfaces, the GUIs for apps. So anyway, long story short, yes, if you are a beginner to web design and web development and you're having challenges with CSS, especially CSS layout, try not to worry too much about it. You are not the only one. Even highly experienced programmers and coders still have problems with CSS because it's so unintuitive. That said, what coders have done in response to how unintuitive CSS can be is that they created frameworks. Uh, the most popular one for user interfaces is something called Bootstrap. And once you know your basic CSS, and you should learn how to do CSS layout with raw CSS, but once you know that, then everybody just uses Bootstrap. And in fact, that's what we do. We're about to do a rewrite of our app, Studio Web, and it is being rewritten with a bootstrap framework, with the bootstrap framework, framework rather, because it just makes things so much easier. Now, one of the things which we look for in modern day websites is websites should be responsive many of the time. So what's a responsive site? A responsive site is a site that simply responds to the size of the web browser, the size of the screen. So here is a website for my book, Build Your Website Now, and uh, which I wrote in 2015. But I wrote this stuff, to, by the way, to be evergreen, meaning the content in here is just as good today as it was back then. It'll be good for years. And that's because the languages and what I teach, HTML5, CSS3, touch on JavaScript, touch on Bootstrap, touch on jQuery, just touch. Everything that I teach in there and all the foundations and so forth, it's 100% up to date. It hasn't changed at all. Thankfully, technologies of web design and web apps are pretty stable now. They've hit a plateau. If you don't know your past in terms of these tech, I've been doing this since the 90s. It was painful because it was changing so quickly. Stuff that you learned a year before was starting to become outdated already. And two-year-old tech, three-year-old tech was totally outdated. This is no longer the case with web tech. It's pretty static. It's pretty stable. Static means stable. So you'd be good there. Anyway, so a responsive site is a site that responds, resizes. You notice how everything's resizing, the text reflows. Even my images are changing sizes. The size of the frog changes. And you notice I have a menu up here. 
and then it resize and then it becomes a what they call a hamburger menu here so that's a responsive site and this allows your site to totally flex and change no matter what size the browser window is or if people are coming on a tablet here's a tablet size or people are coming on with a smartphone so that is a responsive website so to recap if you're learning css you're having difficulty you're trying to get your head wrapped around it the key to doing it the key to understanding css is to concentrate on the basic concepts of css kind of the kind of strange at first that's for sure and nerds would say they're kind of abstract but with time you get it but once you get those basics then you move into something like a bootstrap which is a framework just a bunch of code that makes it easier for you to lay out your pages this particular layout was made with bootstrap as well if you like to read this is my little shameless self-promotion you want an easy to read book 224 pages you want to learn how to write css write html how to build web pages websites you want to understand the big picture and you want to understand how it all fits together you like diagrams and images you like a book that's easy to read lightweight there's only 224 pages i invite you to pick up my book highly reviewed as you can see and uh yeah available on amazon.com ca uk etc 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 and uh, don't take my word for it you can read the uh, book reviews for yourself and see what people think all right that's it for my shameless self-promotion and uh, i think in subsequent vlogs I'll, I'll start appearing on camera again i decided for this one i was uh i didn't feel like combing my hair to be totally honest honest with you so i said ah, i'll do this on screen it was a joke bye